You know what's funny? Hirokoshi was under attack at least two times for the way he draw female characters, namely Momo. But in the story, the guy barely does anything that would any barely any fetish like drawing. And it always comes up to us to do things like this. And yet, somehow he is supposed to be the bad guy. Like, seriously. The guy literally has moments or even hits and to possibly give us this kind of a ending to a fight. Or is this kind of a thing happening to a woman? Or this character? And yet, he's under attack. Attack, even though he doesn't do them. Like, seriously, what's up with that? Uh, I'm gonna just say, it's the logic of the liberals. So yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Overhaul, and today we are going to be discussing think, uh, Chitose Kizuki, or easier to remember, Curious, from the Meta Liberation Army. So yeah, some of you may be asking me right now is, why am I talking about her? In the next season of anime, she will have nothing to do there. there. How? It was going to be until season 5 until she actually appears, and even that's a possibility. But well, true, true. She is a bit, it's a bit early to speak about her, but here's the things. Boobs. Like, boobs, people. Like, it's a woman with giant knockers. Like, probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest. I mean, I guess we need to, I guess M Montley has giants as well, but she changes sizes, so. And I guess we, did we get the size for Midnight? I feel like she's one of these characters whose boob size will be revealed. Or at least stated by her once. Eh. Who cares about those details? The other thing that we need to know is how, that they are big okay, and they are love, and we want to stuff our hats in them. So yeah. Now, Curious, as I'll be referring to her for this, you is an, was an executive of the Mental Liberation Army. And her design is Kinda like Mina's but lip but well Mina's but instead of the horns and the pink skin it's blue skin with I don't know I don't exactly know what I don't exactly remember the name of the hair color but I would say like kinda like very bright purple type hair color. I'm sure that it's written on the wiki side but I just can't remember it. And as you can also see she has similar eyes to how how Mina has them. So yeah, she's definitely so the question was definitely going to a more future was definitely going to more the same realm of designs as Mina's. I wouldn't even be surprised if he had was looking like at some of his older original designs and he took like Mina's and then he said, maybe I can do an art that looks similar to her. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's got what he was kind of thinking with when he was designing Nick Curious. She also wears a, a black dress with black dress and a coat that has a little fur on top all around her. As you can see I draw by it because you know she because it was into that uh, the shipping and uh, yeah anyway yeah anyways so yeah she wears a black dress with a coat well, co coat, which I believe is orange red type of a coloring. So yeah, a pretty. She was definitely not going with an over the top villains design, because they're supposed to be like normal people, and you know having an over the top evil design doesn't make sense. Sense to have if you you know literally right after before the battle you have like a the meeting like. Alright, I'm gonna publish this and this and this, or I'm going the next new story I'll be doing is this and this this. So yeah, her design is basically so I feel like I feel like her coach was also trying to make her design be a bit more out there because a normal looking woman probably will not stick in to your eye as much as if well, she's already beautiful so she will always stick in your eye because of that, but you know, it's the I mean the eyes and the hair color and the skin color kind of help. So yeah. Now to her personality. 
her personality is honestly considering the fact I only believe we had her extremely shown for two chapters. I mean, yeah, I think it was 225 and 226 is where we really got everything about her. If she were all, well enough has a lot of uh, the she quite she most of her personality was revealed. For example, she's only curious about things. For example, when she was doing her big story about Toga, even though she already got pretty much every information for information that she could possibly get, like I feel like it's only really a bit of Toga's personal information was everything missing. She still wanted that literally to do a face to face. So yeah, her she also is, has been in by her backstories a bit. Uh, Redastro told her that she that new story needs a little oomph, a little pump. So do it face to face. It will be better. What she took in extremely to a point that to a point that she kind of went crazy with that. Uh, Nims what this is why. Uh, when in my version of how the battle between Toga and Kyrus ended is saying crazy to kind of humiliate her and call her that. But yeah, she's extremely determined yeah, to get the new story. And she also kind of has this empathy to, well, to the people that get her new story. Because when you know, she, Toga was dying and how you can even say that she's the reason why she was dying there. Now you can tell us that she's the reason why she's dying, Toga's dying right now. No, she put her in the lap and kind of said, and kind of wished to, uh, I hope you ha had fun. So yeah. And as soon as she finds uh, new information about things like Togo, she's like, oh, amazed by it. So yeah. She's extreme. So, so yeah. Also, an interesting fact, she didn't give a shit about the League of Villains, only gave a shit about Togo. So yeah, that's something to tell you about her. Which I would like to know. Why did Toga pick her, trigger her, or activate her feelings, and then not Darby? Because you think Darby would be kind of more, would come, you know, be come from a more mysterious angle, and Toma also come from a mysterious angle. Like, wh what did this creature, or this successor of a great villain? Like, I am kind of curious, like, why did she not find interest in Darby and Tomoa? Because I, if you ask me, I would be very interested in those two as well. But yeah. So personally, she didn't give a shit about the League of Villains. Which, considering the fact that all the other ones seem to kind of be interested in, in the other one, in the League, and she seems to be, like, the least interested in the League. But I'm possibly misremembering, but I feel like she, everyone else was, but she wasn't. So yeah. Now to her quirk. Her quirk is called Landmine. And the way it goes is whatever she touches and if you t step on it or if she activates it, I believe you need to be the one that activates it though. It blows up. Now granted, the damage of it is not over the top powerful. Like it's not going to be like a one shot kill. Which honestly I would ask if that's because she isn't as skillful in using her quirk as Bakugo or if that's literally the main drawback of the quirk. That it's not powerful enough to kill someone. It's powerful enough to damage someone but not to kill someone. Because it, even though it was there that the Liberation Soldiers were training, I don't think that she was specifically training in combat wise. I feel like Gata was the only one. So yeah, she set up a couple of bombs or landmines during the battlefield where she was fighting Toga with her bodyguards basically. And Toga, I feel, I think jumped in, uh, touched or jumped in two of her landmines when Curious uh, when took Toga's attention and when she, Toga went into a build, the building. So I feel like there were two times. Then the third time she used that was on the soldiers who allowed her to for her to touch them to give for them to when Toga uses her equipment to suck their blood to that that they kill themselves. 
，就是 how loyal the soldiers are to the executives. And yeah, to borrow it, so yeah, that's how she used it mostly. But she has another feature to that in which she has this bracelet that can transform to this device, like this, like kind of a blocky hammer thing, in which she. Can use that work as a hand-to-hand -hand type of combat. For example, all the other ability, way it's kind of supposed to be used is by touching something and the person jumping on it. But this, so if she like touched something with close range, it's not going to be as affected unless if she has the whole box thing. I would like to ask if it, it no yeah yeah it could could not work because. I was trying to think that maybe her quirk could be used short range about the device, but now that I think about it, if she would touch someone, it would blow, and she would punch it, trigger it, she would get in damage, and if she uses it on herself, she would also get damage. I mean, it's not like Zora for Black Clover's trap ability. It's basically like either it's either I touch, he gets touched, and I trigger it. And I get hurt as well. I put on myself, and I get hurt as well. So yeah, that's how her quirk basically works. Now to her story of the in the series. So yeah, besides the backstory which I already gave, when uh, she working for Dastro and him telling her to make a story about face to face, and she took that to heart, to a point that she is insane about it. Or oh, crazy. Is she? We don't get anything else from her. Like maybe we will, but it's very likely that right now the only things we are going to be getting is maybe her being that may be mentioned one more time. Time. So yeah, yeah. Curious. So yeah. Yeah, after this, we see her in that meeting when we first time see the members of the Liberation Army. She's not really focused on, she's just there in the back of her. I think we see the least amount from her. her because we see Gather like hanging there, like laying there, and we don't, in his design, otherwise it's completely normal or standard. And I believe we see uh, that trumpet guy a bit. And we also see the uh, Skaptek quite fully, I believe. So yeah, we basically see the least amount from her. So the next time we see her is it when we just just talking to the to the legal villains, and we see her see her be the publisher of Shuisha, the company that published the book that we that that Rudastro wrote. So yeah, she is the one that was in charge of basically spending propaganda. If you really think about it, I mean, sure, I'm pretty sure that. Trumpet and Skeptic, I also believe had something kind of like that, but I feel like it was namely curious. Curious. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So yeah, then then we have the whole battle between the Liberation Army and the League of Villains. She is first seen there with uh, Trumpet as kind of their frontliners or headliners of the main of the main members. It was she's first just in the back, behind him, not really doing much. It wasn't until Toga split up from the rest of the group to do the whole infiltration that she appears. She has a battle and she basically gave us Toga's backstory, explained everything, and you know, based and is purely and you know, fat a bit of fat service here. You think about her because how big her boobs are. Like seriously, you wanna know how big her boobs are? Go on her page and we get to see her color skip. In the last volume it was revealed and also her rock. So yeah, it's beautiful. So yeah, yeah. She, we get a bit of the, her and she basically gives us the whole fan service. Like, I believe she also had kind of a communicator or something to really radio something to communicate to have the interview with Toga. During the fight, she mostly sends her members and her minds to blow up everywhere to take Toga out. Then when Toga is basically right for her life because she's very close to death and she uses the last bit of blood from Bochako, she kind of 
the says saying that she she makes a cry, want to cry because the fact even now we are we are about to kill you still want to look cute, so she kind of rushes to her to kill her, but then Toga you just go up with quirk and touches her and she floats up, which I'm pretty sure is the fastest we've seen someone from being from the ground to the top by having using Kuroka's quirk. So yeah. She, so yeah, Toga runs away from that and hides and yeah. Curious is there, up there, and she's like, oh, I see, doing that trauma, she acted, and she basically gets a new idea and something to add to her story. And then when Toga acti deactivates the quirk, Oraka's quirk, she says that this would be the greatest new story that she will ever written, and boom, she crushes down. Now, this is the part of the story where I was kind of curious if she really did die. Like, did she? Did she really die? That's kind of feel like a prep worthless. That kind of seems like a waste of a character. Character. I mean, isn't that kind of soon? I mean, is it? And, I, and I'm still kind of in denial that she died because I feel like... I don't know what. I feel like in... A world like My Academia, there are way too many explanations for how she survived. Like, maybe one of the members that was falling with her you had some kind of quirk that could make her landing softer. Maybe some of the members that were near were able to come there and get most of the impact from her falling. Or maybe she had some kind of another device on her to not have her die. Or how we could even give we could even give the most Easiest of excuses as she's just stronger than the average person so she would be able to handle it. Or well, a lot stronger than the average person. I'm not really going to calculate how much power or force it took from her to go up there and down there in seconds. But yeah, I feel like there should be ways for her to, to survive this. If you really want to do. So yeah. Now, after that, we not... No, but another reason why I feel like this that she still possible she would be alive is because we never really do see her body. Like you could say that it's because it would be too gruesome. How I believe one of my friends once mentioned that if you fall if you fall from this distance, your face is completely splat your head would be completely splattered, which I understand. But we literally get in this arc Tomo killing his entire family in one chapter to, and we get to see all the gruesome eyes. we see the blob, we see the body disintegrating we see it in one chapter in this up granted it's a bit later but we still see it so you cannot tell me there is no way for Hirokoshi to draw curious as that body the the Either the just her legs would come and have a bunch of blood splattered or anything like seriously, all that would took to see her her that unconscious all her coach doesn't mean to show how gruesome it looks. All he has to technically do is show very close to her is have see a parts of her body that are very close to her head. A complete spell with blood, and we would already all oh, said, "Oh, she's completely dead. Like, she's not coming back." So yeah. Afterwards, I think she's mentioned at least two times by, by, by trumpet and spinner, or maybe it was from Pascal. I think it was trumpet and spinner. How they, how trumpet uses her death as a way to motivate the facts, which is another thing I feel like could be seen as. A way to for them to to say like she's still there alive, but they're trying to make it coming off as she's dead. But no, apparently she's dead. I mean, there was nothing else coming. Oh yeah, she was also mentioned by Redasha and Skeptic, and Skeptic says she didn't have to go there immediately, like in the foreground. Like we could, like she could have. There were ways to do her interview about her being on the front lines. Although, I guess he forgot about that part when he started rushing to twice, huh? Oh, you idiot. So, yeah. 
that's kind of what it, how it will. So yeah, that's so far all we have to her. Now let's talk about uh, now let's talk about the potential story we could have had if she survived. Oh well, maybe later in the chapters we will get her uh, actually revealed that she is alive, just extremely hurt and bleed from the hat. Well, that would be ridiculous. In that case, how would she be able to survive all those blows that Rijasho has been giving to Tomoa and you got Tomoka raging? Ugh. But yeah. Now, the problem, the reason why I'm complaining about her dying is because I feel like a character like her could have quite a bit of potential for the if she joined the League of Villains. I mean, she already expressed no real interest in the League of Villains as a whole, I mean, she didn't really mind them that much, so she wasn't resentful of them like Skeptic and Redastro, and I'm pretty sure even Trumpet and Pet, and considering how Getan seems to be connected to Redastro, I'm assuming that she was not really going, so as trying to convince, not really against killing them, but not really having any strong feelings towards them anyway. Kind of the same way as Darby, if you think about it. I mean, he had no real strong feelings to the League of Villains. He had feelings to follow stay, but not to the league. So yeah, if she, so she does, she, she would not be opposed to it. I mean, maybe she would have a problem with her them killing with Astro, but I'm pretty sure that she's in control of the news stations and all those things. So she would technically be able to post everything she wants. But yeah, but yeah, she would be useful for the league to, to say the least. Like. The league has already kind of stated they, they they like the way the media the talks about and boasts that and having someone in connection with the media like someone who literally has interviews would make so much sense and considering how much she wants to have a big news story, well, if she's alive, if she was alive and they would and Tomar would be like, hey girl, what about Hey, here's like, I have a, how does this news story sound? Interview with the legal villains, people who have just destroyed an entire city, killed over a hundred thousand people. How does that sound? Like, she would probably say yes. Yes, because that is a big news story, that is something exciting. And how? Some people say, well, the problems with the, the way this story kind of goes is the fact that people will is the way the fact the public will just see the legal villains as a bunch of bu bu destructive hungry monsters because they don't know that the liberation army was there and started well with Kyori is there and she could probably find some evidence or have something to prove the fact that that was liberation armies me them doing it we could have that to explain it away. I'm just saying, you could have, you can work with her being alive, and it would make sense her story, her future story potential. Be the manipulator, be the, that, what's the name of that new god from Young Justice, from the DCAU, Young Justice specifically, a god, I believe, is the name he's using. Like, have her be, have that role. I mean, you don't need to have her be the main one attacking or anything. Just have someone in control of the media, at least some position in the media. So yeah, that would make sense. And how even if you want to say that that well, she would be useless later. You can never have someone with an explosion type ability to be completely useless. Like, can you imagine how it would be if like? Like let's say the we had like a similar arc to like the Monster Association arc from Bob Potchman. And let's say she would like be in charge of touching every area of the building where the, the heroes are infiltrating and all was blowing up. Do you really think that all of the heroes would completely be able to take if every step they do is going to blow up in their faces? Boom, 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 boom. And how she could help them get the technology from the Liberation Army. So yeah, her being alive would help the League of Villains. And there's nothing about her really that would say no. So yeah. So it's kind of, yeah. 
if you think, consider all this and kind of think what they could have done with her, I feel like it's kind of a waste of a character. I kind of wish she would be alive. Ah, maybe her coach is going to reveal that she's alive later. I mean, after all, it's not like there's going to be a giant outrage if she would reveal to be alive. I'm sure it'll be alright. I think you're a bit of stretching of my disbelief. But hell, as long as you say something like, oh, she had a technology on her that allow her to take the allow her to not take all the brunt of it, enough to just be damaged but not enough to die. And then you say, oh, the way she was walking was completely only was the safe route because we that's true and Joey McCreary aren't really destroying everything in sight. They're really, they're the attacks are more, you know, focused on one area. So yeah, if you want to have that, I could totally believe it. No, anyway, no, anyways, I hope you liked this video. I hope you're gonna leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all the people next time. Bye.